You went and had your car inspected and you failed for an emissions related problem. Now you got a reject sticker. The most common reason why you would fail would be an EVAP emissions problem. And that's what we're gonna go over in this video, give you some quick tips on how to check it yourself. There's many different reasons why your check engine light would come on between spark plugs, coils, even O2 sensors. But we're gonna focus on the EVAP system, which is the purge solenoid, vent solenoid, even the gas cap, all of which we sell at 1AAuto.com. Whenever you get a check engine light, you scan the vehicle and you have an EVAP code, the first thing you wanna do is check the gas cap. Could be something as simple as you left the gas cap loose or someone else did, and all you have to do is tighten it up. You wanna open the door. The first thing you wanna do is grab the gas cap. You don't wanna just automatically start tightening or loosening it. See if it just pulls out, see if it's that loose. And if not, then you can loosen it up. And then take a look at the seal. See if there's any cracking in the seal. If there's any cracking there, that could be a simple gas cap replacement and that's all you need. Also check around the rim of where the gas cap seals and see if there's any rust buildup. There's a little bit of rust right here. And if it's built up enough, it's gonna cause a leak and then you're gonna get a check engine light. Last, check to make sure the ratchet part of the gas cap is good. Should feel pretty strong. If it feels abnormal, it's probably time for a new gas cap. Now let's talk about the EVAP purge valve. Now this vehicle happens to be a Chevy Silverado and it's gonna be very similar on all vehicles. You're gonna have the EVAP purge under the hood where it's actually gonna purge the air from the system using the vacuum from the intake. Now the purge valve is located right here. It's actually next to the intake on this vehicle. You can see that there's a hose going from the intake to the valve itself, and then another hose that goes towards the back of the vehicle. There's a wire connector that's just two wires. Overall, this is a very simple system. The valve just opens and closes. When you have power and ground going to it, it is gonna open the valve. And then when the power goes away, the valve is gonna close. We'll just disconnect the connector. This is a very easy repair. You can just use a straight blade screwdriver. You can disconnect the hose. That slides right off. There's a little bracket here. You gotta just bend it a little bit. And it slides up. And you can either disconnect the hose here or over here. Just a little tabby move. And there's the valve. And this should be closed at all times. So if you have the ability to push air or suck some air through it, it should just be closed and not allow any airflow. Now let's have some fun, do a little testing. Now we have this solenoid hooked up to a couple of wires. We have one that's gonna be a power wire with a switch on it. And then I have a ground wire on the other side. Now you could take a little bit of compressed air if you have an air compressor and just put it on a low pressure, um, about 20 PSI would be good and just try one side and see if you get any airflow out the end and we don't with this system. Now if we take the switch and I just switch the switch, you can listen and you can hear the solenoid clicking. That's moving on the inside. So if you had the pressurized air on one side and you clicked it, it should come out the other side. So how to emulate that a little bit, we can take a balloon very carefully. I'm just gonna take a rubber band. And wrap it around. So that's wrapped around good. Put the compressed air up. And you can see the balloon is not inflating. Now if I open the switch, a little compressed air, open the switch, and it's gonna fill the balloon. That's pretty cool. So it's not leaking because the balloon is keeping all the air in it. And then we open the valve and the air comes out. 
and that's how it's supposed to work. So if you set this up and did this same experiment and you weren't getting the same results, then you're definitely going to need a purge valve. So we know this one's good, now let's put it back in the vehicle. Now underneath the vehicle, let's talk about the vent valve, which is located right here on this vehicle. And it's going to be somewhere near the fuel tank or especially near the vapor canister. This is where there's a charcoal canister and the vapors go through the canister, get trapped. Now what the vent valve's job is, is completely opposite of the purge valve. When there's too much vacuum on the system, the vent valve is going to open up and allow less vacuum in the system. It's going to allow fresh air into the system, which this hose just goes to a fresh air. This goes into the canister for the charcoal. This valve again is very simple. All it is is a valve that opens and closes and has two wires going to it to activate it from opening and closing. The only difference is this valve is normally open and when power goes to it, it actually closes. So let's take it out and take a look at it. Very simple to take off. Normally there's a clip here or a clamp, not necessarily a worm clamp like this. Let's connect that. And then a couple of hose clamps. Use some hose clamp pliers and slide it off. Take that off. Now one thing you want to keep in mind, sometimes spiders do get into the fresh air side of the hose and clog it up and that can cause a check engine light. So what you want to do when you take off the fresh air hose, you want to blow through that with some compressed air and see if it blows through smoothly. Otherwise, you might have a spider in there. And disconnect the connector. Again, it's just two wires. And it slides right off. Now we can do the same experiment with this using compressed air. Now, again, you have to have it pretty low. You want to around 20 PSI and just lightly go in there. And it should leak out when there's no power or ground going to it. So we hook up the power and ground. Again, check. You hear the clicking, so that's good. And just to show you that there's actually air going through it, we're going to put the balloon on the end. And see, with no power and ground going to it, it just leaks out. To try to grab the switch and I got the switch and it's holding air just like that. And if I let off the switch the air comes out. Now obviously it's supposed to hold a certain amount of pressure so for the vent valve this may not be as accurate as doing it for the purge valve but you get the idea of how this works. So the way these valves could fail is they're either stuck all the way open or stuck partially open where you're getting a little bit of flow through where it's not supposed to or stuck completely closed. And then either way, you're going to get a check engine light. So we know this one's good. Now let's put it back in the vehicle. Now that you've fixed your EVAP emission system with 1A Auto Parts, you're not going to need this anymore. And if you enjoyed the video, make sure you subscribe to our channel, ring the bell, turn on all notifications so you don't miss any of our videos. The most common reason why your check engine light or would cause is, uh, and also the gas cap, which all of which we sell at 1AAuto.com. Whenever you, whenever you, <laughs> you're not gonna need this anymore. <laughs> Let me do it again.